I think really there's two primary sources of light with which to see by. One is the sun, or by extension, artificial illumination, electric lights that we've developed, or, the, or fire. And the other one is the light of consciousness itself, which is kind of a light. It is something that illuminates. It is something that makes things clearer, and it allows you to see, uh, actually, to see the things that you can't see with your eye. of this meeting right now is to determine what needs to be completed on each of the pieces and to determine who is going to take responsibility for the things that have to be completed and to try to figure out when they will be completed. So we have a list here of the pieces. Which one you want to start with? St. John. John. Um, you mentioned openness and closeness. Um, that sort of is something that I think maybe perhaps this is uh, something I was influenced in from reading a lot of Eastern philosophy where they talk about non-dualism as, as a way to really understand the world, that you must transcend the way that the mind wants to work on its own, which is to think in opposites, and therefore to make some kind of value judgment, like this is good, this is bad, you know, or this is what I want to do, that's not what I want to do, this is what I want to get close to, that's not what I want to get close to, you know, whereas to see the whole where night and day, birth and death, uh, in and of themselves do not have a value. One isn't good, one isn't bad. They exist in relationship to each other. They're, they're a circle which, when put together, completes the whole and makes the whole thing to turn and to move. Work has always fulfilled a very personal need for me to make it at a certain time in my life. And as I've gotten older, that's sort of just gotten deeper. And in a way, I don't feel like I have any choice, okay? My mother passes away in 1991, and it's going into my work. It has to. There's no other way.
waking consciousness, which is the, the part of our minds that we go through most of our lives with, it's the part of us that gets on the bus at the right time, that goes to the bank and gets out money when we need to, and makes appointments, and goes to work, and does our job, and goes home, uh, is actually a, a small part of who we are as complete beings, and in actual fact is simply a narrow spotlight or beam of light relative to a much, much larger um, dark room in a way that we're not aware of. And that uh, dark room is actually present during our waking hours as well as it is in sleep. The only difference being that during sleep, the conscious spotlight mind is turned off. Uh, and during the day, it's on, and it tends to think uh, in big terms. It tends to think that it's the most important and it knows what's going on. And it tends to mistrust and ignore the other deeper levels. Uh, and so um, I think that we are dreaming constantly, that we are having visions constantly, that we are connected to some deeper level constantly, and we're just not aware of it. And that deeper mind, that larger self, is the part of us that can go flying through walls and up over uh, mountains and leave our bodies and come back and go back through time and go forward into the future. Well, there are things in my work, like in the show here, there's a piece which takes place in absolute darkness. And I was in there just before you came, and we were setting it up, and we were looking for light leaks coming under the walls so we knew where to fix it. And so we were in this room, which was completely black, and nothing, you couldn't see anything. And, and it's a very strange feeling in your body. It makes you very insecure. You get frightened. And, and all of the times when you're a young child is frightened of the dark and so on and so forth, that's not a cultural thing. That's a, that's a very deeply uh, rooted uh, physiological response to fear on a very fundamental survival level, that human beings are afraid of the dark. <laughs> 